So how do you say Sydney? It's Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. So and short, and short knee, short knee. <laughs> Sydney. Yes. Sydney. Just say it lightly. Sydney. And we are now in Darlinghurst. Okay. This is Darlinghurst, and all this call it Darlo. Darlo. Hello. So this is Nobi, and welcome back to my vlog. Behind me is the Harbour Bridge, and this is the Sydney Opera House. Uh, this is. Opera House and uh, Harbour Bridge are two of the most iconic landmarks here in Sydney and in Australia as well. And in this video, I'd like to share a friend who has been very good to me and has been a friend of mine for over 10 years now. This friend of mine is very generous, so he's going to share to us some of his experiences in life. And I think you should listen because if you want to develop yourself, this guy is the man to follow. Let me introduce to you my friend, uh, Dad. Hi, hi, Dad. hi everyone. <laughs> And, uh, can I order two cappuccino, please? Anyway, Naj was just recommending this restaurant to me. It's right in front of 
the circular key station it's called the city extra if you go to sydney and you and you need to come for an 11 p.m coffee this is where they should go right naj um senator gingona came here once and then they arrived around like midnight so yeah so we went there at 2 a.m so this is the skyline of sydney and that's the harbor bridge and in a few meters we're going to witness the that's iconic the, that's where the cruise ships go sydney like opera the house there. that's the overseas passenger lounge So this is the iconic Harbour Bridge and that is the Sydney Opera House. So, so these were the fireworks size during New Year. You know, New Year's Eve fireworks happens here. Okay, so So we are here in this is Harbour the Bridge. Harbour Bridge. And Sydney Opera House. Opera House. Well, Nadja, again, I'd like to thank you for your hospitality and thank you for the many, many years of friendship. Nothing has changed since then. You're still the same person that I know now. Uh, still snobbish. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nadja. I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're, you're a natural. I'm sure you'll do it well. So, Nadja, tell me. Tell what? <laughs> why are you in Sydney right now? I'm in Sydney right now because I live here. I choose to live here. That's, that's the way I should say it. Um, I, when, I, when I first came to Australia in 2011, I moved from New Zealand. I first arrived in Brisbane. And I love Brisbane. I love Queensland. Gold Coast, I mean. Yeah. It's one of my homes, I think. But I moved down to Sydney in 2014 for my law school. So I think the main reason why I moved down to Sydney is because of my law school and luckily i finished that last year so that's why i'm here good job oh two years ago i mean yes mm. so how did you become a lawyer well i became a lawyer by finishing um first the law school uh, law degree a graduate entry llb at notre dame university yeah it's usually around like five minutes from the city um, i chose notre dame because it's the only law school in australia that i know which offers uh, full-time face-to-face in all its courses. So there's no there's no online courses, no online lectures. It's all face-to-face. -face. So I'm that kind of person. So um, learning for me is more effective if it's done um, through face-to-face. -face. I need to see the face of my lecturer. I need to see the reaction of my classmates during discussions. I need to hear the voice of the person presenting. To me, that the learning is more organic. Um, I tend to learn more if uh, in that kind of environment um, I think if I do online lectures I'll be using Facebook <laughs> or um, you know running late at sessions or not turning on my cameras so I think I am the best of myself in learning if I do it face to face so you said you finished law school two years ago so yes. what happened what happened after it so I finished law school in um, 2018 that's the first requirement to become a lawyer the second requirement is you have to finish a um, we call it PLT or practical legal training or the proper name of it is graduate diploma of legal practice GDLP I finished that at the College of Law at North Sydney that's a um, six months course and I finished that in June 2019 and then were there any other requirements to yeah, become so a lawyer? the last requirement is that you should pass the ethics committee um, screening one of the things I realized at, uh, at becoming a lawyer in Australia is that the society, the general society actually um, holds you to a very high standard of ethical duties. Um, before I thought, you know, you're a lawyer, it's almost like a license to, to do things your way, um, even if it's sometimes um, improper. And 
these lawyers get away with those things and that's what we see in television so last requirement I had to go through is the ethics board committee so that's when um, a candidate for um, admission to the Supreme Court of New South Wales should be assessed screened qualified and approved by the ethics board that is um, that is when you when you have to submit and prove to the to the committee that you have a good and, and a good character to become a lawyer and I think the learning the prince the, the philosophy behind that is that um, when you become a lawyer the society actually holds you to a, a very high standard of ethical duties when I became a lawyer in order to pass the ethics uh, committee you have to have very good character you must have um, done um, charity works some volunteer works and you haven't done serious crimes in the past that you've never been a bankrupt person um, yeah so I think the ethical duties that you are actually being um, subjected to is very high and that's very good because it keeps the standards of um, lawyering in Australia very high it's very good and you've had people speak about your character as well right? that's right and um, you know um, when, when you're a lawyer it's um, it almost seems always that people think highly of you as a as, as, as a person who have high high dignity and um, high level of integrity to do things the proper way so now um, say those three requirements again number one that's the law degree um, second is the GDLP or the Graduate Diploma of Legal Practice, six months. And the third one is the approval from the Ethical Board of um, Eth Ethics Committee of the New South Wales Law Society. And that's how you become a lawyer in yes. New in total, South Wales. That was a total of, I think, four years, just over four years. So, yes. Naj, you are a lawyer now. Yeah. What celebrations did you do to celebrate your being a lawyer oh when i became a lawyer i wouldn't forget 15th of march 2019 is the day i became a lawyer one of those days i will never forget in my whole life i uh, i was so excited i called mom back home i asked my mom to make sure that she um, makes a a native muslim maguindanao dress for me that i'm that i was gonna wear at the event so that was made by Farid Ginomla um, and that was shipped to Australia. I, I, I went to the Supreme Court wearing that and I was a bit scared because um, I couldn't forget. I was a bit scared and nervous because uh, the, the instruction was you have to wear formal attire, formal suits. And I wasn't sure if wearing such native Filipino Muslim uh, attire was uh, was 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 appropriate. Um, anyway, I went to the Supreme Court that day wearing it, and fortunately on that day, the the uh, speaker, the guest speaker, who is I think one of the judges um, at the at the court in um, New South Wales, spoke about the cultural awareness in Australia. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it, it was just very fitting um, to wear that. So that day we had, um, we did the oath um, taking that day. I became a lawyer. I signed the register book of the role of solicitors um, um, in New South Wales. After that, we went to um, Darling Harbour with my friends. Some of those came from Brisbane. We went, uh, we went there and we went for a lunch cruise. Um, after that, at night, I think we went out for dinner. It was a day of celebration. And the other celebration that you did was your graduation ceremony. Yes. Um, weird enough, um, my graduation ceremony happened after my admission, which doesn't usually often happen like that. So um, the gradu graduation ceremony, um, I think, I remember happened in April, April 2019. Um, that was a month after my admission so um, I was very very appreciative and very glad my very good friend Senator Gingona and his wife Tita Marivy Gingona flew all the way from the Philippines to join me in that day um, they were my um, they marched me on that day um, so on the, um, after my graduation ceremony the graduation ceremony was held at the townhouse town sorry hall. town hall town hall at CBD um, after the event, we actually had a big night of celebration at, um, at the harbor. Um, it was a night of, 
uh, fun with 70, at least 70 people from from different states uh, of Australia, from Queensland, from uh, South Australia, from uh, Victoria. Um, yeah, it, 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 it was a great night. Um, we had you, um, Attorney Novi, was there. You were the master of the ceremony. You were the MC that night. Um, uh, my boss at the law firm were so impressed of your um, of your public speaking. Um, and um, yeah, my mentor um, Idris was there too. Um, it was it wasn't just a night of celebration. It was a night of celebrating friendship. Uh, it wasn't just about my law school because my friends from years and years ago all came that came to Sydney to celebrate with me. So Naj, talk to me about the legal profession and your job as a lawyer. Oh well, um, as a lawyer, uh, I still consider myself as a baby lawyer. And that was the term used by my professor before, baby lawyer. Um, when you become a lawyer in Australia, you are supposed to practice under a supervision of your um, supervisor um, for two years. So. My legal practice is still under supervision. That's, there's a condition on my license for two years. That's finishing in March next year, I'm hoping. Um, I'm working at a small law firm in, it's a small to medium sized law firm at Inner West. Uh, the name of the law firm I'm working at is Principal Lawyers. So I work under the direct supervision of my two great bosses. My number one boss is, um, Spiro. Spiro is specialized in litigation and my second boss is um, Ethan. Ethan is a corporate beast um, lawyer so they come from they come with different um, expertise um, f fields of expertise and I get to enjoy learning from these great mentors um, so we do cover a lot of areas of law, almost every, uh, almost everything actually, except um, taxation law. We don't do that. We don't do immigration law. Um, so things that we cover are examples: criminal law, uh, wills and estates, um, family law, traffic, um, and other uh, other common areas of law. Yeah. Mm. Naj, what's this job satisfaction in being a lawyer? What, what gives you the sense of pride that you are a lawyer? The greatest satisfaction in my very humble, short period of experience as, as of today is um, that what a great feeling it is to be able to be the source of strength of your clients in their most distressed time in their life when they come to you you have to think it from a from a perspective where they actually need your help to solve a, to, to solve a very big problem in their life um, when I say big problem I'm talking about probably losing the, the meaning of their lives you know people uh, face the risk of being imprisoned people face the risk of losing custody of their kids um, all these things are very important in their lives and on that very moment in their lives you become the source of strength they listen to your advice so what is it exactly that lawyers do well i'm sure all of us would have an idea um, at least of how lawyers do uh, of how we do our work you know we 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 fight for our clients um, i think in my own um, realization, I could say that the most important thing that we do is we put the interest of our clients at the very front um, of our fight, um, that we think of their best interest at any point in our relationship. Um, I've, uh, I actually like the principle of fiduciary duty. Um, where it's actually more than actually more than the principle of duty of care um, I like that principle it's when you can actually rest assured that your lawyer have the duty to protect you to protect the best interest of you at 
any time of your um, relationship with the with, with your lawyer. Well, anyway, Naj, thank you for sharing your um, lawyer's journey, your journey to attorney. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> humble journey. Like yeah. I am still a baby lawyer. I'm still. I've got a lot of things to learn. Um, I'm still on my learning years of my early years of lawyering and I'm looking forward to becoming a good big shot lawyer in the near future, I hope, inshallah. And, and, and with the way you're going, with your character, with your personality, I'm sure you'll go on a very long way. Thanks Again, so much, Novi. Th thank Any other message for for anyone who's wanting to do a law degree? Um, you gotta love it. Um, it's not impossible. And um, when I did my law school, I know it's hard. I know it's very challenging, but I never felt its impossibility. And it's like everything else just in like, life, just right? Like anything when, else in life, if you love it, if you want it. When you're passionate it, about it, you, then you have to go for it. Yes, right. That's right. It's yeah. It's, it's it's just one of those things. I think that you, if you love it, you 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 put that effort in it, and you don't you don't feel the that you don't you don't see the impossibility of its of it happening. Yeah. Well, anyway, Doug, for the record, I, I take this opportunity to thank you for for all the influence <laughs> that you have done in my life <laughs> as well, Naj. Um, I see you as a person who's a go-getter, who's you know living your life living your dreams and I think that's very important and I hope you realize too I take so much pride in going after the dreams for <laughs> myself as well and Naj is certainly one of those in inspirations for me and I think you have the capacity to pursue your dreams it's not necessarily being a lawyer you can't be the best pas pastry chef you want to be or the best um, doctor you want to be but you just have to go for your dreams and right. Naj and I are both Filipinos by the way and we take pride in being Filipinos we are capable of a lot of things and I am very we, proud of, I am very proud of my roots from if Potabato we can City. do it if we can do it then so can you 100% right? yes well, anyway thank you for watching the video and I'll see you some other time thank you Naj. Yeah, not a problem see ya <laughs>